Hey all here at OS Reviews, you're watching our hands-on review of the Microsoft Launcher for Android. We're taking a look at this now because with Windows Phone 10 quickly coming to an end, at least Microsoft isn't releasing any new features or hardware, the opportunity seems ripe for Microsoft to release an Android-powered device, maybe with their own skin on top, if they wanted to produce hardware in the future. However, that's still speculation at this point, but for now we're just going to take a closer look at their interface and features they've added on top of Android. So this launcher was actually originally released in beta form back in 2015, but it was released to the public through the Play Store uh, about two months ago in December. So it seems like we have uh, a pretty polished version now with a few new additions I wanted to quickly cover. So first of all, the interface seems pretty clean aesthetically, and the first thing that jumps out to me is the HD wallpapers in the background, which are powered by Bing, as you can see here. Uh, Bing actually produces some pretty high resolution and fairly pretty looking wallpapers and graphics, so that is a plus in my opinion. This is also a dynamic wallpaper, which will change depending on the day of the week. If it's a holiday, it's also going to match that theme, so it's similar to Windows 10 in that sense. Furthermore, there's even a wallpaper switcher that you can tap on once to randomly change the wallpaper depending on uh, what you have installed and what it pulls up through the internet. We also have an oversized widget for the time and weather designed by Microsoft, along with the search bars, which are pretty much on every single page that you swipe to. It gives you quick shortcuts uh, to web searches, and you can also set it up to use uh, Microsoft Edge, which there's now a mobile version for Android that you can install. There's also an interesting QR scanner that's built right on end that you can tap on once, and it will launch the camera for quick searches to the web for products, uh, barcodes, things like that. You can tap on the microphone key to access Cortana, so yes, Cortana is now baked in with the launcher that is their competitor to the likes of Android Assistant and Siri or Amazon Alexa. So if I pull it up now, you can see Cortana is now listening and it's parsing my speech. It's actually pretty accurate uh, and Cortana has gotten significantly better uh, even over the past year just because there are more and more Windows 10 powered computers. Uh, in, the, in the hands of owners, and uh, Microsoft's kind of machine learning works so that as it parses through more users and has more data, it actually improves the overall experience. So on here, it seems like some of the responses and queries actually seem more intelligent than before. Uh, so if you ask it things like jokes or for it to sing you a song, it's actually going to do that. There's actually a comparison video that we made earlier that just discusses the AI assistance uh, from Microsoft, Amazon, and Apple if you're interested in that. So moving on, there's also a dedicated folder for Microsoft applications. What you notice is that we haven't installed any of these apps. It's actually a pretty neat feature because installing the launcher doesn't necessarily force you to also install all of these apps immediately if you don't want to use them. Obviously, it makes a lot of sense if you're already tied into Microsoft's ecosystem, which is one of the reasons why you would want to try it out. Uh, but here we have a vertically scrolling list of Microsoft apps, including Outlook, LinkedIn, Skype, Cortana, uh, the essentials such as Word, Excel, Power, Point, Xbox uh, Mobile, the Edge browser, and some Bing services. So these Office apps, such as PowerPoint, Word, and Excel, are actually full versions. They're free, and they allow you to view, edit, uh, and create new documents on the fly. It makes for a pretty powerful experience, especially as uh, our phones are quickly replacing, let's say, netbooks, and in some cases, even our laptops. So it allows you to get more work done when on the go. Uh, and these apps, again, have been getting stronger and stronger, and I like that they're here. Something else that you notice right away is that Microsoft's launcher is a lot more about swiping and gestures. In that sense, we can see some design philosophy carried over from Windows Phone. Uh, if you guys remember, the tiles basically scrolled up and down vertically, and there were some horizontal left and right scrolling between additional options and pages. So on here, I can also swipe up from the bottom to have access to my tray uh, of commonly used apps, which I can pin on here. Uh, and there's also quick launch shortcuts for things like Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, accessing the flashlight, orientation, and the brightness of the display. These are a lot easier to reach than on the top of the screen, so they make actually a lot of ergonomic makes sense. Furthermore, I can swipe up from another region of the screen to bring up the launcher. So similar to the Pixel phones, uh, that gesture will bring me to the full app launcher, which is sorted alphabetically uh, for quick navigation. I can also search by name. And the design is consistent as well, even in the folders, the way that everything scrolls vertically as opposed to horizontally for the most part. So uh, everything just actually feels quite polished, smooth, and in a sense, slightly reminiscent of Windows Phone, which in my opinion is still a very elegant mobile OS. 
All right, so moving on, other things that you can find on here include uh, all of your apps and uh, programs basically carried over from the previous launcher that you were using. So for instance, I was using LG's S-Class interface, and the first thing that Microsoft asked once I installed the launcher was if I wanted to retain the same apps and the layout that I had before. So I clicked on yes, I'm happy to see that I have all of these folders and tabs retained. So things like T-Mobile, Tools, The Clock, LG-specific apps, VR apps are all here, so I don't have to re sort them out. Uh, so in addition to adding some new panels and pages, it's basically given me the old ones here as well. What's also new here is I can swipe over to the left from the main screen to have access to a dedicated panel of news feeds as well as notifications based on my use with Microsoft services. So if you're signed into a Microsoft account, it can tell you things like reminders and emails uh, as well as your calendar through Outlook if you have any new meetings or notifications coming up, which is pretty helpful uh, if, you, if you use a Windows computer to see that on your phone. And you also have access to some news feeds that are dynamically changing. The idea is something that we've seen before uh, in terms of having a panel dedicated to news and notifications. We saw that, for instance, with uh, HTC's Blink feed many years ago. Uh, we see that today with the Google Now launchers. But still, it's nice to see that Microsoft has also implemented that, and I think it's a rather useful feature for most folks. The drag down notification shade, for the most part, is still left as the regular Android experience, so you really won't find any new changes here. You still have access to your notifications, and you can still access things like turning on Wi Fi and Bluetooth, just like you can with the bottom swipe on the edge. Long holding on the home key can also be set by default to Cortana instead of Google. Assistant. In fact, Microsoft recommends that you do that the first time you install the launcher. So you can completely wipe away uh, kind of some of those traces of Google services if you really want it to and replace it with all of the Microsoft services. Otherwise, I can also long hold and you can see there's slight modifications to how uh, Microsoft has designed uh, the way that you can add new, let's say, panels, pages, as well as uh, adding widgets and changing the launcher settings directly from below. Finally, I can also tap on launcher settings here. And this page is really reminiscent of, let's say, Windows 10. So if you've used a recent Windows computer, the design language in terms of the fonts and the text is very familiar looking. It's very Microsoft in how it's uh, laid out. But I can change things again, like the wallpaper, contact support, uh, add a Microsoft account and log in. I can also back up my content to Microsoft services. I can change the feed. Tapping on gestures, there's a uh, pretty interesting ones. So again, right now I have it so that swipe up is opening up the drawer. I can also swipe down to access search, which is pretty cool. Just double tap for a screen lock. So I can tap on that and it still works. Since we're using an LG phone, that was a feature that basically was there originally, but if you're using a phone that doesn't have double tap to wake or unlock, it's actually a pretty cool and useful addition uh, in my opinion. From my experience, the overall operation is also pretty snappy. There's really no delay and compared to stock Android or again LG skin that I had before, it feels equally as fast. Even as I downloaded and opened up lots of programs and apps in the background, it seems stable. It seemed very consistent, which we'd, we'd expect from a company like Microsoft. So as a quick test of some of those gestures we saw before ending this video, if we use, let's say, a two finger drag uh, down, it brings us to settings. Uh, two fingers drag up will bring up Cortana, as you see here, and a drag down from anywhere on the screen here will bring up uh, also a search, both for Cortonix as well as our frequency, frequently used apps. So that's more or less our hands-on review of the Microsoft Launcher for Android. I think that this is a pretty solid attempt. It combines some classic uh, kind of Microsoft elements, including thoughtful gestures as well as integration with many of their services. So if you are a fan of Microsoft, if you are a Windows Phone user, you've been trying to uh, take the time to now switch over to Android, then the Microsoft Launcher is certainly something that you should consider, especially since it's free and it's just a quick download away from the Play Store. So thanks for watching this video here at OS Reviews. This is a closer look at the Microsoft Launcher for Android.